This video is sponsored by Revopoint. I can't believe that worked. Okay, all right, okay. <gasps> I was not planning on this, but ChatGPT has once again basically given me superpowers and allowed me to create two add-ons for Blender. One that gives you a lighting rig setup that's a target light with some really cool controls that help speed up lighting scenes in Blender. And then a psych wall with complete customizable controls for how many walls there are, how large it is, and even how big the curvature is. You're gonna be able to download all of that. But before we get into it, I wanna make a little bit of an announcement I've been working for months now on the biggest project of my life and I'm this close to telling you all about it. But until then, I've decided to start a Discord server for all things Jake in Motion. And I really want this to be an awesome community for motion designers where we can all help each other out, where we can kind of just hang out. And I think it facilitates discussion a lot better than what we have here on YouTube. So check the link in the description to join the Discord server. I'm gonna be making most of my announcements there as well as on my email list. So make sure you sign up for one or both of those. Come hang out. I'm going to be in there all the time. Say hi and help me develop this community to be as helpful to as many people as possible. Now let's get into how I use ChatGPT to create two different add-ons for Blender. But first, let's rewind a bit. A few years back, I spent a good amount of time learning Cinema 4D and Redshift. I took Cinema 4D Basecamp from School of Motion as well as C4D Ascent, and I really got into it. I was really loving working with 3D. I even had a client who needed 3D work done, so I was able to invest in a better machine with a GPU, and eventually the Puget machine that I'm working on now. I subscribed to Grayscale Gorilla Plus, which more than paid for itself in the amount of time that it saved me creating materials and lighting my scenes. And that's right about the time that I decided to start a little project called the Effects of After Effects and I suddenly didn't have nearly as much time as I used to for my clients. And eventually I joined forces with Battleaxe and completely stopped freelancing altogether. And this was so I could pursue my actual passion, which is teaching, educating people about motion design and telling people about the amazing tools we have at Battleaxe. I wasn't working in 3D nearly as often and when I did, it was usually just for fun. So my Maxon and Grayscale Gorilla subscriptions suddenly weren't really paying for themselves anymore. I couldn't justify the cost anymore. So I decided not to renew those subscriptions. Descriptions. Fast forward a year and I was really missing 3D. I did check out Unreal Engine 5. I even took Winbush's School of Motion course, but that environment was very different from Cinema 4D and it just wasn't really what I was looking for. And at this point, I'm sure lots of you are racing to the comments to say, don't you know Blender is free? <laughs> and yes, I know. I've known. I have friends who use Blender on a regular basis. I'm friends with YouTubers who have entire channels dedicated to teaching people Blender, all of which you should check out. Here are their channels right now. Go subscribe. I just never took the plunge until a few months ago. I finally downloaded and installed Blender and started binging YouTube tutorials. Thanks to C40 Basecamp and Ascent, all the fundamental principles that I learned about 3D rendering transferred over to Blender seamlessly. The biggest hurdle I had to get over was just learning how Blender did things so that I could work more similarly to the way that I did in Cinema 4D. Anytime I had a question, I just Googled it. The problem I ran into is that some of the answers to those questions were five, six, eight years old and from a version of Blender that looked and behaved very differently from the one that I was learning on. And sometimes it took a while to get to an answer that actually worked. And that's when I remembered a video I made a few months back about using ChatGPT to help you write After Effects scripts. I knew GPT-4 had a knowledge cutoff of around 2021, but maybe ChatGPT could help me answer some of these basic questions about Blender. And wouldn't you know it, the little chatbot was great. More often than not, ChatGPT was able to help me keep moving forward and I really felt like I was starting to get the hang of Blender. That being said, there are certain things about Cinema 4D that I was really missing. One of the simplest things is the target tag. But the way that I used it most was through Redshift's target light. It allows you to point a light at a null object or any other object with a single click. Now Blender can do this, but it's a multi-step process. You have to create the light, you have to add the track to constraint, and then you have to select the target object. I realize that's not much of a process, but it's still three steps instead of one. And I really wanted that target light button. I knew that Blender worked with Python, a coding language and one that I know absolutely nothing about. But if ChatGPT could write JavaScript for After Effects scripts, then maybe it could write Python for Blender add-ons. Do you know how to write add-ons for Blender? Yes, I can guide you on how to write add-ons for Blender. Light bulb moment! And that's when I was off and running. ChatGPT gave me a Blender add-on that created a light with the track two constraint and an empty object already linked. So all I had to do was move the empty around and the light will always be oriented towards it. 
I tested it out, thought through some more functionality, and then just asked ChatGPT to iterate on it. And I continued this process until I had the add-on that now does everything I wanted it to. Now I have a custom option in my light menu. With a single object selected, the target is aligned to the selection. With multiple objects selected, the target is created at the center of those objects. You can also add any number of lights at a time and they'll all be radially distributed around the target. ChatGPT even walked me through how to use a custom icon for the user interface for my target light. And you can have it too. There's a download link in the description where you can get this target light add-on for Blender. And by the way, I have a decent amount of presets and even scripts for After Effects from past tutorials that you may have missed. So go ahead and browse all of those as well. To install the Blender add-on, just go up to the Preferences, Add-ons, Install, navigate to the zip file and click Install Add-on. And it'll show up in the Lights menu. Now using this target light add-on has really helped speed up the lighting process in Blender for me, especially when I bring in my own 3D scans. Speaking of which, the sponsor of this video is RevoPoint, who sent me their latest device to test out, the Morocco 3D Scanner, which is an all-in-one device, no cables, phones, or computers necessary. This scanner is launching on Kickstarter and you can find a link to the campaign down in the description. There are so many things that I love about this 3D scanner, but here are a few of my favorites. It's an all-in-one design. I don't have to connect this to any phone, tablet, computer, power source. It's completely self-contained, so I can scan without having to be tethered to anything. There's an array of depth and color cameras on this device that allow you to scan a wide range of object sizes, from small things like toys or jewelry, all the way up to full body scans, or things like furniture or even vehicles. The device runs a version of RevoScan that's almost identical to the desktop experience, but with touch controls. I can preview and even process the raw data that it captures into a fully textured mesh, all directly on the device. And the hardware inside is seriously impressive. I can do all of this processing really quickly, which allows me to to see if I got a good scan or if I need to do some more work before getting onto the desktop. And when you are ready to move to desktop, the transfer process is seamless. You can easily transfer the project files from the Morocco scanner to your desktop and then open them up in the desktop version of RevoScan, which has a great new feature that I love that lets you step through all of the originally scanned frames and delete frames that might be problematic so that you can end up with a better result. I'm gonna be having a lot of fun scanning things with my Morocco 3D scanner. Thank you so much to RevoPoint for sending it my way and for sponsoring this video. Make sure you click on the link in the description to find out more about the Kickstarter and how you can get your own. Now I've made my life easier when it comes to lighting things inside of Blender, but I didn't stop there. Another thing I wanted was an easy way to create a psych wall or a cyclorama so I could have seamless backdrops for an environment inside of Blender. I didn't know if an add-on could actually create 3D geometry or if this was way too complicated for ChatGPT to actually pull off, but I still thought through all the functionality that I would want this object to have before I went to ChatGPT. And this was my list, size controls toggles for the left and right walls, an option for a ceiling, and size controls for the curvature. I knew that this was probably too much for ChatGPT to take on all at once, so I started with just asking for a plane mesh with size controls and axis alignment. And that worked on the first try, so I asked for more. Great, could you write a script that creates a mesh made up of two equally sized connected planes, one on the XY axis and one on the XZ axis? That didn't give me exactly what I wanted, so I just casually explained what I wanted changed. That created the two planes, but I'd like them to be aligned and connected at the vertices in the back of the ground plane. Basically, I want a floor and a back wall that are connected. ChatGPT immediately understood what I wanted and gave me another version. From here, I just kept reaffirming that ChatGPT was doing exactly what I had hoped for and just kept asking for more things. Eventually, I had an add-on that allowed me to create a psych wall with size, visibility, and bevel controls. It was even better than my original concept. And of course, I created a custom icon for the user interface, and that Blender add-on is also available down in the description. You can add this to your version of Blender right now. Since then, I've been using ChatGPT to help me understand Python and how I can convert things that I know about JavaScript into Python. Like the linear expression in After Effects, ChatGPT was able to translate that into a series of equations that did the same thing inside of Blender. One of the biggest takeaways I had from all of this back and forth was just telling ChatGPT that I was pretty good at JavaScript and understanding expressions, but that I was completely new to Python and Blender. Don't be afraid to tell ChatGPT where you're confused because it's more than happy to hold your hand through any part of an explanation. And more often than not, it ended up explaining everything 
everything in perfect clarity and I came out of it understanding what I was supposed to do. And that's my story. Let me know down in the comments if ChatGPT has blown your mind in some way. I would love to hear about it. And don't forget to join my Discord. If you ever create anything for After Effects or Blender or anything really using ChatGPT, share it there. I would love to see it. If you want some feedback on it, I'd be happy to test it out. I really wanna get that community as large as possible. So go check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, 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 hey,